It's just called the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? We've technically already written this down, okay? It is the definition of the definite integral, but you do need to recognize it as the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, your function must be continuous, okay? Just like with differentiation, all that good stuff that we've done so far, you have to be continuous uh, on the interval in order to do this. Um, then you've got the big F is an antiderivative on the interval, okay? So, now we're going to look at some different functions, though, okay? Uh, we haven't done anything with the absolute value function. Now, you'll remember when we did derivatives, the absolute value function was a little different. Um, we had to split it up, just like with limits, we had to split it up into its pieces. Um, so, a similar thing happens with anti-differentiation, okay? Um, what we're going to have to do here is we are going to have to split up this interval. Okay, now I do want to start uh, by looking at the graph of this function just so we can get a visual of what this looks like. <clears throat> Although this, I promise you, will be a calculator inactive question. Okay, it will be a calculator inactive question. And on the quiz that we're going to do on Friday, there is a question like this. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, and you're not allowed to use a calculator on Friday. Okay, so you've got to know how to do this. Um, so here is the graph of 1 minus the absolute value of x. Okay, now we are going to integrate this from negative 1 to positive 1. Now, we don't have an anti-differentiation rule for the absolute value. Okay, we do not have an anti-differentiation rule for the absolute value. Um, so we need to use the fact that the absolute value can be expressed as a piecewise function. Okay? Yes, ma'am? Yes. Um, let me fix my window here so that we can see a little bit more in detail. All right, now, just by visual inspection, what should our answer be for this? I don't know what how that. would we figure out how would we figure out what this definite integral? What does the definite integral represent? Area, Area under, the, under the curve between negative one and one. one. I don't know what that equals. Huh? I don't know what those. I just don't know what those individually equal. With just Zero? looking. Zero. Yeah, they're the same, but like what? But they're not. Okay. Does, does that help if you know what the height is? Oh. So, so what what shape is that? A triangle. A triangle. A triangle. So one half base times the height. What's our base? Two. 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 What's our height? One. So the answer one. should be one. one. Okay. Yes. But no, not one and one. We did the whole thing together. The, the base. Oh. And the base Okay, so we've got to figure out, well, how do we do this without the calculator? Okay, so we got to split this up into two pieces. If you look at this, the left side of this function is a linear function, right? Until we get to zero, that is a line with a slope of what? Positive one and a y-intercept of positive one. So remember, absolute value functions, when we split this up, we're going to say this is the definite integral from negative 1 to 0. How do I know that it's 0? <clears throat> you take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to 0. That's your changing point, okay? Um, in this case, it is 0, all right? So remember, the left side of the function, we change the signs of everything inside the absolute value. So that's 1 minus negative x plus we're going to go from 0 to 1, the right side of the function, we, we keep it the same. Okay, so now let's integrate. <clears throat> so that becomes 1 plus x. So the antiderivative of that is x plus x squared over 2. And that's from negative 1 to 0. Plus... The second piece is x minus x squared over 2, and that's going from 0 to 1. You 
with me. Okay? So let's plug in our numbers and crunch them. Okay, when we plug in zero into that first piece, it's going to go away. So we've got minus negative one plus one half. Right, negative one squared, positive one, so that's positive one half. Plus, we got to plug one in, so we've got one minus one half. When we plug in zero into both those pieces, it's going to give us zero. So when we distribute that first negative, we get positive one minus one half. And we've still got plus one minus one half. If you wanted to simplify that beforehand, that's fine. But I prefer to look at this right here as two minus one, which gives us the final answer of one. Several different ways you could have gone about that. Okay, but the key is when there is an absolute value, you must separate must separate it into the two pieces because there's not really an antiderivative rule. I mean, this is this is the rule for anti-differentiating absolute value. Yes. So uh, here's another one. Different interval. We're going from negative two to six. This time is x plus the absolute value of x. I'm not going to look at the uh, graph first. I'm just going to go with it. Okay. Again. Take what's inside the absolute value, set it equal to zero, solve for x. Well, there's no solving for x here. Uh, zero is our turning point, breaking point, changing point, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, so we go from negative two to zero. We change the sign. Plus, then we go from uh, zero to six. We keep the sign the same. We just drop the absolute value. Well, look at what happens. The first piece there, x minus x, that's zero. That goes away. We don't even have to worry about that part. And the other part, x plus x is 2x. Well, that's nice because that's easy to integrate, right? That's x squared from zero to six. So plug in the six, plug in the zero, final answer, 36. So that one actually looked a little bit more complicated to begin with, but it turns out it was a lot easier because part of it just disappeared. Okay, part of it disappeared. Um, so, yes, that is all.